Peace family, this your boy Young Pharaoh, and you are now watching Crumb TV. This is Daniel, LOLJK, and you're now watching Crumb TV. Hey, this is Reggae Boy, and I'm watching Crumb TV. Watching Crumb TV? You are now watching Crumb TV. This is Miss Diva, and you are watching Crumb TV. You are now watching Crumb TV. This is Lady Lee from Las Vegas. You are now watching Crumb TV. I love this shit. I'm watching right now. If you could. Please repeat after me. Peace. Ashe. Islam. Namaste. Hotel. Green Rising. Mama Lakeman. Walaikum. Salam. Boom dia. Oseo. Halito. Wagwan. What up though? Rahu Bat. Um Jambo. How are the children? Sak Passe. Whatever the greeting is in your respective language, I'm your humble brother, Crumb, here for another installation of Crumb TV. You already know what it is, family. This video was called The Cult of Aten, Young Pharaoh. Respectfully. Uh, but before we get into, get into all of that, I want to do what I do best, and that's put some respect on your name by acknowledging the first responders. Now, in the first two and a half minutes, there's more than 60 first responders. So for the sake of time, I'll just do the first three. We call that the perfect. I think I got to put like a sock over this thing. Family, how is my audio from a one to a 10? How is my audio? Is the audio good? Is the audio not good? From a one to a 10, how is the audio? You see, I got this little do hit mic. Um, From a one to a 10, how's the audio? Okay, so the audio is pretty decent, I suppose. Okay. Okay, good enough. I accept that. Okay, so let me uh, continue on with the first responders. I want to make sure that when I say your name, say my name, say my when I say your name, everybody hear me. Uh, number one in the first res of the perfect, of the first responders, uh, it's, Iris Ann X. She says, Brother Crumb marching into March, day is, uh, first day of March, with some March madness. Greetings to you and all. Greetings to you, sis. I see you. I love you. I appreciate you. I'm grateful. I'm humbled. I'm honored. Number two in the building of this perfect trifecta, it's Conscious Connect. She says, Peace, love, and light from TV family. I see you. I love you. I appreciate you. I'm glad. I'm humbled. I'm honored to have you. Eiffel Baker is number three of this perfect trifecta. And I do want to emphasize perfect. Eiffel says grand rising kings and queens. And what a grand rising it is. I see you. I love you. I appreciate you. I'm glad to have all of you. Uh, if you are a master student, you know what it is, family. Uh, we do housekeeping in the first five minutes. That means that we wipe our feet before we walk in the door uh, by way of smashing that like button on the way in. That's if you are a master student, that means you already know what it is. If you're a noob, if you come here because of the profile picture, um, if there's something else that has attracted, I'm sorry, not a profile picture, but the um, thumbnail if the thumbnail caught your attention or whatever the case may be um that's all good you can tap in at the end but for the people who already know uh and they are master students uh definitely hit that like button on the way in we try to stay within the first five minutes so uh, i won't keep you too long that's just to kind of allow everybody to get in but you know whoever's here uh, uh and gonna um 
<laughs> that uh you know whoever's here is here so i tap all the way in all right so with that said let me um let me get this thing off the screen let me get this on the screen the cult of Aten. um as you can see here i had a couple different uh names that i wanted to title this powerpoint in this video so i just put all the different names of this video uh so yeah it's uh the cult of Aten, and i'm a i'm a uh, dig in young feral chest today uh i'm i'm gonna uh, get on his head and i'm gonna stay on his neck uh <laughs> but yeah this is also called satan versus demon it is also called reptilians versus akhenaten it's also called um as you could have guessed uh, crumb versus Pharaoh. So I'll go into this. And here, let me say this before I go all the way in. I told young Pharaoh and I had a conversation on TikTok. Him and I were on TikTok and we were talking. I didn't record the video. That was like my first time doing it. I should have recorded it. I'm so mad at myself. Uh, but you live and you learn. So young Fro and I had a conversation on TikTok and we said, we agreed that we were going to do a video together, blah, 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 which is cool. And, um, after that, uh, he said, what do you want to talk about? I said, we can do red pill content and we'll talk about baby. Uh, 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 uh the black woman is not guide something to that effect, or we could talk about Aten, the the god Aten and his prophet Akhenaten, who was really a woman, and that really upset him in that particular video, and he wanted to try to talk about it. And I'm like, you said you didn't want to talk about it right now. I don't want to get into it right now. We might as well just come on Crumb TV. He was like, all right, cool. Hit me on the the DM, whatever the case may be, whatever you call it on TikTok, and um. You know, I, I hit him up and he never said anything uh, afterwards. Um, all right, whatever. It is what it is. So that's the backstory of how him and I interacted. And I was going to I was going to face him and not make it some type of diss thing, but really talk about the content academically and how it coincides with his story and my story, because I'm really big on the reptilian things, as a lot of you probably already know. Um, so anyway, yeah, the cult of Aten starring yours truly, Young Pharaoh. <laughs> That's respectfully. I don't know who did that. I don't know who pressed that button. Let me stop. That was me. Before Aten. So this is this is before Young Pharaoh got to the whole Aten thing that he has now. And if you don't know about the young Pharaoh Aten thing, obviously I'm going to tell you about it in just a second, but let's talk about young Pharaoh before he got to this whole Aten situation. So this is before Aten, the young Pharaoh version. Young Pharaoh started out as Pharaoh Allah of the 5% nation. And if you didn't know about the 5% nation, according to arcapologetics.org in an article titled Nation of Islam 5%. It reads, the 5%ers are a splinter cell group that broke away from the Nation of Islam in 1964 under the leadership of Clarence Pudden 13X. This is young Pharaoh's origins. This is, this is what he came out as. He wasn't young Pharaoh at the time. He was Pharaoh Allah. Um, and then he was branded as young Pharaoh. According to this Pinterest, you can see with my red arrow where it says Pharaoh Allah, but it has the young in front of it, which actually came later, but they still tie him to the Allah 5% nation thing. So young Pharaoh pulled a soldier boy and siphoned the energy of the unalive. This is how he started. 
let 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 the story tell itself respectfully but what do i mean by saying he pulled a soldier boy and siphoned energy i would assume that's a good question so here's the answer according to hiphopwired.com in an article titled soldier boy talks tricking the internet it reads he admits that he you that he used to upload his songs to the illegal file sharing site LimeWire and title, I'm sorry, and title his tracks after whatever was popular at the time. So he, of course, Soldier Boy, admits that he, he used to upload the songs to the illegal file sharing site and titles track after whatever was popular at the time. So people who were looking to download the new 50 Cent or Britney Spears song were were actually downloading Crank That. After initial disgust and confusion, the listeners eventually kept listening and became fans of the song. This was more so big with the 50 Cent song In The Club when In The Club first came out. And I want to ask the listening audience, if you even remember, because you got to be this tall to ride this ride, and that's me just, just being funny. <laughs> You got to be a certain you got to be a certain age to even know what I'm talking about when I say things like LimeWire, Napster. These are going to be your early crude. Um, you know, this was title before there was a title. This is uh, Apple iTunes before there was. If you even know what I'm talking about, can you please press zero, zero, zero? Because a lot of people probably don't know respectfully, and I probably have to. You know teach y'all about that one one day the origins of title and the origins of apple itunes and the origins of blah 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 anyway so yeah uh so people who were looking to download the new 50 cent song in the club when they went to go download in the club crank that would come on soldier boy siphoned the energy of 50 cent mainly and other big songs like with artists of course britney spears but mainly 50 cent in the club not only did 50 in the club blow 50 cent up 50, uh, uh, in the club blew soldier boy up he siphoned the energy now why is this important because young pharaoh branded himself as sandra bland on facebook and siphoned the energy from her controversial demise a lot of you may not understand what I'm talking about, but I know there's a, a couple of you who are master students who know it, who, who understand precisely what I am saying right now. Just like Soldier Boy siphoned the algorithm of 50 Cent hit record in the club, Young Pharaoh siphoned the algorithm of Sandra Bland's controversial demise that is all wise right and exact only after a heated exchange between him and the amin Ra squad did he become young pharaoh he was pharaoh allah until this particular incident happened after this incident and, and they called him young as a as a demeaning epithet when they called him young it wasn't to uh, uh um say something nice to him they were saying it to say that you're you're young and you don't know what you're talking about if you don't believe what i'm saying you can go watch this video i'm in raw squad where we come from on sonetter studio shout out to sonetter that was the first time they called him young and they called it to him in a mean way where they were going against him saying you young whippersnapper you don't know what you're talking about you're a greenhorn you're wet behind the ears that's what they were that's what they were that's the context of them calling him young that's how he became young pharaoh prior to that i'm sorry prior to that he was pharaoh allah this is all wise right and exact and this is very important because this is this is all what's going to bring up Aten. it is uncanny it's weird it's it's weird that the amen this is Amin, very important. The Amin Raw squad rebranded him and sent him on a new trajectory. This is no different than when 
Jacob or Yaqub becomes Israel. This is no different from when um, uh, Emmanuel, because that's what that, that's what his name was, became Jesus. This is no different from when I'm trying to think of somebody who went through a transition and and received the name change. In in the Bible, there was a lot of people who who out. Uh, I think his name was Abram, and then something happened. He became Abraham. Uh, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, uh, it was Esau after Esau sold his birthright to his brother, he became Edom. After things happen, you get, after you get a name change, it changes your path and you go to, you know, this is your initiation to the next level. Uh, Pikachu, after he goes through his evolution becomes, uh, Raichu or, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's, it's uncanny that the Amon Ra squad branded him and put him on a new tra uh, trajectory. He tried to come back as the supreme rival Aten. So the Amon Ra squad gave him that name, which is a powerful name, but it was in, in the, in, you know, not in good faith. It was in bad faith, actually. And Amen, if you know, is the supreme rival of Aten. He came back as Aten against the Amen Ra squad who who they terrorized him that night this night all of them jumped on him they jumped him that night everybody was just screaming on him from all like they got him in a circle and everybody was just screaming on him they initiated him that night that's how he became young pharaoh before before that he was pharaoh Allah so he gets initiated by the Amin Ra squad. And if you know the history of Amin, Amin is a very controversial war god. So he comes back. This is this is some you, you, you can't make this up. He comes back as Aten. Akhenaten, this is in real life. Akhenaten changed the trajectory of the real Amin Ra squad, which is just because Amin Ra was the leader of the polytheistic religious ideology of the time. Amin Ra was the leader. Amin Ra was to religion what Jay Z is to hip hop. Amin Ra was to religion what, um, I'm trying to think of a vanguard of, of what Rum DMC is to hip hop. Um, you know, I didn't want to do another hip hop reference. I'm trying to think of someone else who's a vanguard in their own field of profession, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, keep it moving. Uh, with that said, I cannot change the trajectory of the real Amin Ra squad in an epic religious mono, uh, um, um, monotheism, polytheism war. After this, young Pharaoh goes on a monotheism war i don't know if this is in his is in his natal chart that he was going to do this or what but i find it very interesting the chain of events because hindsight is 2020 so now he's initiated by the amin ra squad and he incorporates the power of aten to take down his 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 nemesis nemesis so this is after young pharaoh taps into aten akhenaten birthed monotheism giving way to the likes of judaism which is a form of monotheism giving way to christianity which is a form of monotheism giving way to eventually islam which is of, of course another form of monotheism this all started you don't get judaism without Aten. You don't get Christianity without Aten. You don't get Islam without Aten, because this is where you're going to see the origin of monotheism come from, from Aten and Akhenaten. And when you go look at the Amin Ra squad, the, the, these are the leaders of polytheism. Young Pharaoh went on a rampage destroying the leading world religions just to go on the most extreme monotheistic religion, the cult of Aten. Y'all remember what I'm talking about. 
Remember when young Pharaoh went against Judaism? And he went as Aten University. So nobody noticed, nobody was going to say anything about that. Then he went against Christianity. Now, of course, he got his page taken down. So someone else posted his stuff and the other person apparently titled it Young Pharaoh Explains Christianity. And it's like a little TikTok, whatever. And it says uh, to the left, the truth about Christianity, how we forgot so fast. The KKK and all slave masters was pure Christian and some of the oldest Christian churches have slave jails in the bottom of the church. The worst thing that ever happened to black people was Jesus. Matter of fact, let's just put Jesus on child support because he left and never came back and never will laugh out loud. Um, and I apparently there's it's like an audio clip or just one of his teachings. Um from the golden era of young Pharaoh. Um, and this was supposed to be my Islam reference. I can't find the reference of him going against Islam, but he did on multiple occasions. And I think it was by way of nation of Islam, but he did go against Muhammad as well. Um, but yeah, he just talks a lot of uh, bad stuff about Christians, even though this whole Aten thing was what brought you Christians in the first place. Um, you know, a uh, a double minded um a double minded man is unstable in all his ways uh i believe that's a bible verse my mom used to say it all the time akhenaten was a religious extremist who named everything Aten. go back to those videos but with me and crip jesus and crip jesus is the only person i know who can hold his own with me on the topic of Akhenaten. That's why I was so interested in having that. When I got on TikTok and had that conversation with young Pharaoh, he said, what do you want to talk about? We were on TikTok together. Somebody saw that this video, somebody who's watching this video saw him and I on TikTok. And, and young Pharaoh got the video. Young Pharaoh got that video of him and I talking. I digress. So now um, he said, what do you want to talk about? I said, we can talk about red pill content, baby mamas in them. Kevin Samuels revenge or something to that effect. Um, or we could talk about Akhenaten and the Aten cult. He said, let's talk about Akhenaten. He chose that. And I knew he was going to choose it. Even though we would, we would have came together more so like this on that red pill content, baby mamas and blah, blah, blah. But with that Akhenaten thing, we were going to bump heads, but that's what he wanted to do. So I said, let's do it on Crumb TV. He said, okay. Akhenaten was a religious extremist. The first, the foremost, the biggest Akhenaten is your very first Jim Jones. Akhenaten is your very first Idi Amin. Akhenaten is your first... Maccabees. Akhenaten was the a, a religious extremist who named everything. You know how much everything is? Just a joke. Named everything Aten. Young Pharaoh named everything Aten, just like Akhenaten. P A U. Remember when Young Pharaoh used to say P A U all the time? That was Pharaoh Aten University. Aten banking. Remember, go back to ancient Egypt. Aten named everything. I'm sorry, Akhenaten named everything Aten. Everything in the city, Aten Street. Aten Street, Aten Boulevard, Aten Road. Aten Apartments, Aten Mansions. Aten Monop. Everything, this is back, this is real life. Back in the day, Akhenaten create whatever he created, he put Aten on it as a part of him being a religious extremist. Remember when Young Pharaoh was going to be a rapper and it was Aten Records? You can't make this up. Rem remember, I, 
I I forgot Young Pharaoh's a gamer. So now he got I in gaming. You are a religious extremist. And this is after you attack Christianity, which your religion birthed. Y'all, y'all love the fruit and hate the root. But in this case, it's backwards. He loved the root, but he, young Pharaoh loved the root, which is Aten, but he hate the fruit of Aten. Christianity is the fruit of Aten. Judaism is the fruit of Aten. Islam is the fruit. You, young Pharaoh loved the root and he hate the fruit. Young Pharaoh came out with Aten gaming. I said, you are religious extremists. But this was a part of the branding because remember, he came out as Pharaoh Allah. and Everything he attacked, he adopted. Everything he attacked, and I love the brother. I, I love young Pharaoh. I'm proud. I was proud of him. I was very sad to see him fall. But I saw how you went against Polite and Polite was wearing that eye thing. And then you started wearing the eye thing. Light gets the fake eye tattoo and you get the real eye tattoo. And I remember when Sarah suit and said he was calling himself the general. And then you start calling yourself the general. And then remember after young Pharaoh claimed that he sobered up and we all know damn well, young Pharaoh did not sober up. And then, and, and then young Pharaoh teamed up with Sa Netter again. And Sonetta was clearly taking advantage of him, in my opinion. And young Pharaoh had a very non-heterosexual exchange where he talks about his relationship with Sarasu and Seti. And now he takes, just like he took from Polite, now he's going to take from Sarasu and Seti. And young Pharaoh says this in a very domineering fashion. I will beat the shit out of Seti. I will beat the fuck out of Seti. So don't think I'm, I don't want nobody to get general. I'm the real general. I'm the real general. He a YouTube general. So but with that being said, Seti was sitting right here on my lap. I'll hug him by his waist and tell him just like this. Seti, nigga, and rub on his head. And I tell him, Seti, you never had to accept $10,000 from me and then don't tell me you don't fuck with me. From TV. You would sit this man on your lap and rub his head and his stomach and whisper in his ears about $10,000 and how this man don't deal with you no more. And and you, you telling Sonetta of all people like, bro, that's, that's weird in my opinion. And now you the general knowing darn well, everybody know Sara Sut and Seti is the original general. Now you the general. Everybody know Polite was wearing that eye. Now you wearing that. <laughs> what's what's going on? And this is all after Aten. After he taps into that Aten energy is when you see all of this stuff start to happen. And the Aten, remember the nemesis of Aten, the, the arch nemesis of Aten is amen and you don't see the amen thing happen until after they jump and initiate him he was jumped and initiated by the amen he he never had none of this unfolded until after he they initiated him i don't even i don't even think he knew or realized the 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 course that these these chain of events would lead him on before Aten. Now this is real life, not before Young Pharaoh's Aten. This is before the idea of Aten really started to go hard in ancient Egypt. Once upon a time, in a city called Thebes, remember Thebes is one of those new cities, like New York. Thebes is like a New York. It's a new city after the pole shift. The ley line shifted. 
because we we only build cities on ley line these are energy centers so they build a city on thebes so it's kind of a new city and remember all of these energy centers these are gods all of your gods are associated with cities I, I probably should have put this in there, but I'm glad I didn't because it kind of doesn't have anything to do with it. It's just a side note. When you're dealing with a God, a God is an energy. A lot of these energies are based on ley lines of and, and these energies are coming from um, this particular uh, earth that we're on, whether it's a flat earth, a hollow earth, a globe earth, a holographic earth, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so Thebes is the new city that has this new energy to it. Now, this is from um, Wikipedia. It says Hyksos, and it reads, Warfare between the Hyksos and the pharaohs of the late 17th dynasty eventually culminated into the defeat of the Hyksos by Ah Moses I, who, found, who founded the 18th dynasty of Egypt. So, there is no 18th dynasty. The Hyksos are running ish this dude our moses comes in kicks their asses and then he he starts a new dynasty meaning he, him and his family start to run ish from here on out and this is the 18th dynasty this is this is where it begins not only does our moses tap into new technology but he taps into spiritual warfare he channels the old reptilian energy of the god Amun. If you know anything about tapping into spiritual warfare, you probably are going to think about Constantine, uh, who said, In hoc signo winkis, in this sign we shall conquer. This is different. This is after uh, Caesar gets stabbed in the back, Rome spirals out of control and dies. Constantine picks up the the remnants of a burn a burnt down city, and he runs the the machine for a thousand more years under spiritual warfare. Caesar and them, this is Europe. Caesar and them didn't deal with spiritual warfare; they just dealt with the sword. The old boy incorporated the cross, uh, and this was a new type of channeling of energy that Constantine is, is famous for. But Constantine was not the first one to tap into spiritual warfare. It was Ah Moses of the 18th dynasty who who tapped the, the, the patron, the father of the 18th dynasty, who tapped into spiritual warfare. And he did it with the reptilian energy of the god Amun. This is very important to the Young Pharaoh versus Crumb TV uh, battle of the minds. So the question should be, who is Amun? answer a moon also amen the same thing at the end of the prayers amen that's what that's how we, we used to sing it out i can't remember when they did that but i remember them saying that in church uh also called amon a-m-o-n also amon a-m-m-o-n or amana was a major ancient egyptian deity who appears as a member of the Her Hermopolitan Ogdoad. With the 11th dynasty, Amun rose to the position of patron. Oh, my thing isn't running. There we go. After the rebellion, hold on, did I go? Uh, with the 11th dynasty, Amun rose to the position of the patron deity of Thebes. After the rebellion of Thebes against the Hyksos and with the rule of Ah Moses I, Amun required national, I'm sorry, acquired national importance, expressed in his fusion with the sun god Ra as Amun Ra. So he's taken over. So they, they're putting him with the big dogs. All right, we're going to put uh lebron in the same category that we're putting jordan from now on his name is going to be lebron lebron james jordan because he's now in that same league that's basically what they did with amun he's the new he's not new but he's, he's not on the uh, uh, jordan side 
So, so, so they're all categories. So they're going to put him in there by just putting Jordan on his last name, LeBron James Jordan, uh, Amun Ra. On his own, he was also thought to be the king of the gods. This is Amun. He's a big deal. Amun Ra retained chief importance in the Egyptian pantheon throughout the New Kingdom, with the exception of the uh, Aenis heresy under Akhenaten. Amun Ra is in this period held the position of trans transcendental self created creator deity par excellence with osiris amun ra is the most widely recorded of the egyptian gods with osiris amun ra is the most widely recorded of the egyptian gods that's very, that's important I'm not when I say who look at the very top of this slide the question who is a moon answer a moon is the most widely recorded Egyptian god a moon is Michael Jackson the leader in that particular field and I I, I really hate to do all these um pop culture references I'm try something a little more uh uh, scholarly. Amun would be the um, Neil deGrasse. Amun would be, you know, so, you know, a vanguard in that particular field, that, you know, that dude. As the chief deity of the e Egyptian empire, Amun Ra also came to be worshipped outside Egypt as Zeus Amon in Greece and Jupiter Amon in Rome. So when I say Amun as the leader in his ranks, it will, it will be no different than Zeus is the leader of that particular type of God. And Jupiter would have been, you know, the leader of his group of gods, the same way Amun was the leader of polytheism. Amun was the leader and he had a whole bunch of gods behind him. That's very important. Amun is the leader of the X-Men. Amun would be uh, Professor X and there's a bunch of different mutants behind him. Or maybe Amun would be Magneto and there's a bunch of different mutants behind him. But the point is, Amun is the leader of polytheism and there's a bunch of gods behind him, just like Zeus was the leader and there was a bunch of gods behind him. And Jupiter was the leader and had a bunch of gods behind him. I'm not going to beat that horse anymore. Now, here's the important thing, because I didn't plan on beefing with young Pharaoh. Lord knows I did not. And I still don't have a desire to beef with young Pharaoh. Let me play this thing. Young Pharaoh did this thing for me and I. Uh, I am grateful that that he did it and I appreciate it. Shout out to Young Pharaoh. Peace, peace, family. This your boy, Young Pharaoh, and you are now watching Crumb TV. This is Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Young Pharaoh. You are now watching Crumb TV. That's right. That's right. I appreciate my brother. I just don't appreciate how Young Pharaoh be talking so bad about reptilians. I don't like how, how he be talking so bad about reptilians. That's That's that stuff I don't like. And the reason I don't like that is because um, with Young Pharaoh in particular, the reason Young Pharaoh be talking bad about reptilians is because Young Pharaoh is down with Aten. And Aten is the is the the arch nemesis of Amun. And Amun is a reptilian. We're going to have to deal with that. The reason Young Pharaoh talks so bad about reptilians is because it, it, Young Pharaoh is on this Aten kick because he joined the cult of Aten. And Aten, his biggest enemy is Amun, and Amun is a reptilian. Amun and the Agdoad. In Egyptian mythology, the Agdoad, ancient Greek meaning the eightfold, or ancient Egyptian, simply meaning eight, were eight primordial deities worshipped in Hermopolis, the city of Hermes. 
The earliest certain reference to the Ogdoad is from the 18th dynasty. Texts of the late period describe them as having the heads of frogs for the males and serpents for the females. This is the reptilian energy that Ah Moses I tapped into. The eight Ogdoad story starring a moon is a reptilian alien origin story that rivals the competing local alien origin story of the nine Enad starring a tomb who was also reptilian by the way but obviously that's neither here nor there crumb well the the enad were the the first ones yeah depending on who you ask but this whole thing with the ogdoad the eight reptilian gods who are the origin story of earth that comes with the 18th dynasty with this new energy Ah, Moses the first replaces Atum and the Enads with Amun and the Ogdoad. This is spiritual warfare. I'm about to go into real war. I was going to have a friendly conversation with young Pharaoh. And we were going to talk about this reptilian war that happened back in the day that makes young Pharaoh say reptilians are bad. Because he's with Aten and his cult. With this new energy, Ah Moses I replaces Atum and the Enads, the ancient ones, with Amun and the Ogdoad, the new ancient ones. Kinda, I guess. <laughs> yeah, the if it's new, how can it be ancient? If it's ancient, how can it be new? Anyway. Yeah, uh, he uses this energy to father the greatest Egyptian dynasty. And even though, obviously, I typed this, I don't want you to think that's my bias. Oh, well, Chrome, you like the 18th dynasty, so that's why you wrote the greatest. It's just a matter of opinion. But let's just look and uh, take a gander at Wikipedia's article titled 18th Dynasty of Egypt. Question, what is the most, uh, what is the famous dynasty in Egypt? And it should be the most. What is the most famous dynasty in, in Egypt? Answer. The 18th dynasty spanned a period of some time. The dynasty, also known as the Thutmosid dynasty, uh, for the four pharaohs named Thutmosis. Several of Egypt's most famous pharaohs uh, were from the 18th dynasty, including uh, King Tut, whose tomb was found by Howard Carter in 1922. Uh, 18th dynasty. This is Encyclopedia Britannica, if, if that makes you feel more comfortable. The 18th dynasty, often regarded as the greatest of the rulers of ancient Egypt, uh, thought Moses III was a skilled warrior who brought, who, who brought the Egyptian empire to the zenith of its power by conquering all of Syria, uh, crossing the Euphrates to defeat other people, blah, blah, blah. Um, so when I say the 18th dynasty is the, the greatest dynasty, that's not my opinion. That's general consensus that everybody says, hey, you know, all the big names come from the 18th dynasty. Um, Amun, rise of the ram, because we're dealing with this reptilian god. But you have to understand, press 111 if you may not know about reptilians, but you know reptilian shapeshift. Not saying that's good, not saying it's bad, not saying anything. Listen, uh, dogs bark. It's not good, it's not bad, it is what it is. Reptilians shape shift. If you understand that, one, one, one. Moving forward. So now, the shape shifting Amun, after he goes from the war god, I I'm, I'm sorry, excuse me, uh, when he transforms into his war form, that is the form of a ram, a moon, rise of the ram. Let me just make sure I just, I'm, I'm clear about this other part. Um, I thought uh, something to say. A moon is a part of, oh yeah, it's, it's right here. Did it say it right here? Amun. 
Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it says it in uh, the very first sentence. Amun was a major ancient Egyptian deity who appears as a member of the Hermopl Hermopolitan Agdawad. So the, the original eight, here, let me, do I have a picture of them? I hope I do. Yeah, okay, here it is. These are the original eight Agdawad, and Amun is one of the frog head dudes. So, you know, he is a amphibian, reptilian type of dude, whatever. Um, just want to make sure we confirm that he starts off as reptilian, and then after they use that reptilian energy, then he um, shapeshifts into a ram. So uh, question, why is a moon depicted as a ram? Answer, according to sciencedirect.com in an article titled On the Origin of Amon's Horn, it reads, However, an evolved form of a moon portrayed with a ram's horns to denote the fertility and war-like nature, this is very important, war, of the ancient animal of the temple made a forceful return as the supreme god of the new empire. Four pharaohs of the 18th dynasty. This is very important. I didn't write this. This is a screenshot. Took his name, including King Tut, which literally means living image of a moon. And his name was not King Tut a moon or a King Tut Ankh. A moon is what this says right here, but it was really King Tut Ank Aten before they forced him to change his name. Anyway, a moon rise of the ram. This article is called uh, the source. The source material space.com in an article titled Aries constellation facts location and myth. It reads: Don't confuse Aries and Aries, which we know uh, vowels are interchangeable. So it's not that we're confusing it. It's literally the same word, but I'm not going there for this particular point. The Greek god of war. The constellation Aries is named uh, for the ram because they tapped into that ram energy. The 18th dynasty has the biggest military. The 18th dynasty will George Bush the button. That's that's not even a joke. That really happened. That really happened. The 18th Dynasty, George Bush, the button. I'm going to confirm that. And this is what uh, young Pharaoh and I were going to have some points of contention on. The war between the reptilians and Akhenaten, but I'm working my way to that. I'm not there yet. The constellation Aries is named for the for the ram with the golden fleece in the Greek myth, uh, myth of somebody. Aries is Latin word for ram, according to the Greek myth, according to GreekMythology.com. This one guy was the son of this king and his first wife. Blah blah blah. Um. Ram is an anagram for Mars or Rams with an S. Rams, R-A-M-S, is an anagram for Mars. If the M is inverted, it becomes W, making the word wars. This is the energy that the 18th dynasty tapped into, and they needed that energy to defeat the Hyksos. That war energy from the ram, from Aries. This this is the reptilian shape shifting into the, you know what they needed. The 18th dynasty continues to grow for seven generations off this war energy from the reptilian shape shifting to a ram. However, by the eighth generation, something goes terribly wrong, and you can see my little birth chart here. Ah, Moses the first at the very top left hand corner. And then under him, you're going to see Amenhotep, Thutmoses the first, Thutmoses the second, Hatshepsut, Thutmoses the third, Amenhotep the second, Thutmoses the fourth, Amenhotep the third, and then Amenhotep the fourth, who changes his name to Akhenaten, which you see my red arrows pointing to Akhenaten. 
when Akhenaten comes along, this is all in the 18th dynasty, that's when things go wrong. This is this is the energy that young Pharaoh tapped into. The, remember, young Pharaoh is special because he got his YouTube channel up to half a million. This is young Pharaoh's rise to fame is nothing less than the story of the 18th dynasty. The fall of a dynasty, the cult of Aten. Akhenaten defeats, I'm sorry, Akhenaten defects from the religious power structure and goes rogue due to rampant religious corruption. He publishes edicts to dismantle the current religious status quo, effectively waging war on the reptilian Agdoad. Akhenaten goes to war with these reptilian overlords who, according to Akhenaten, they are, they're reptilians. They're posing as priests, as high priests. These reptilians who are gods, their children are priests and high priests. Their children collect tax. Their children live for an exceptionally long time and they know the secrets of the occult. These are the demigods. These are the Nephilim that were not giants and they look like normal people, but they have the bloodline of the gods, the fallen angels that mix with women. These are the reptilians that Akhenaten has a problem with. but they're not going to tell you the whole story. And this is what young Pharaoh and I were going to debate on. Well, we were supposed to just have a, a conversation, but it was going to end up as a debate. Y'all already know what it's going to be. All right. So this is a uh, encyclopedia Britannica in an article titled Akhenaten, Armana, Monotheism, Pharaoh, of course, Britannica question. What did Akhenaten destroy? Answer at some point after his fifth or uh, Regno year, Akhenaten initiated a program to erase the name and image of the Theban god, because everything started in Thebes, Amon. Amon is Amun or Amen, as we've already confirmed. From all monuments, a decision that wreaked widespread destruction in many Egyptian temples. This is basically saying we're going to tear down all those pictures of white Jesus in the black church. <laughs> no disrespect. That was not supposed to be a joke. Um, but as you can imagine, a lot of people would be ups A lot of people in the black community would be upset with that because, you know, and I'm not trying to compare the, the reptilian overlords to the white Jesus, but that's the picture that the bad guy is going to paint because they obviously are at odds with each other. Military death blow. The 18th dynasty is considered to be the last great dynasty of Egypt as it was at its height in power and wealth. Uh, dyslexia, wealth and power. With great power comes great responsibility and Egypt was becoming irresponsible due to outside influences. This was due to the greed of the priest of Ptah. The priest of Ptah are reptilians. Ptah is green. Who embezzled the faith. Oh, I'm sorry. These, not all reptilians, family, I'm going to say this, and I know you're going to have your, your own opinion, and I'm not trying to tell you what to think. But I just don't want the family to practice absolutism where they say something is all. Nothing is all. Press 222 if you understand not all reptilians are bad. Press 222 if you understand not all gods are good. Press 222 if you understand that, everything, that, that we live in a reality of duality and polarity which are just fancy concepts for balance. 
negative and positive, hot, cold, magnetic, electric. Tap all the way in, family. So a lot of people are going to paint the reptilians as bad. And I'm I'm not here to defend reptilians and make and, and, and paint reptilians as the best thing since sliced bread. Just like I'm not trying to sit here and say Jesus was all good and he was the best thing since sliced bread. Jesus had his effed up moments, just like the reptilians got their effed up moments, just like all of us be having our effed up moments. Sometimes you the devil family, stop playing. Sometimes you, you might, you know what? Maybe devil is too too big of a word. I'm sorry, stigmatized of a word. Maybe you won't accept that you were a devil, but you can accept that at some point in your life, you were someone's antagonist. You were someone's antagonist. In the movie, in somebody's movie, your ass was the antagonist. I don't know whose movie, but if somebody made a movie about their life, your ass was in the movie as the bad guy. <laughs> I'm not a devil. All right, fine. You're not a devil. You're an antagonist. I digress. So Pata and them, these roles were, were, were held by uh, high priests who were demigods, who were demiurges. They were half gods, half human. Uh, these are the Nephilims that were not giants if you believe in that type of thing. After Akhenaten cut, cut off the financial fat from Pastor Porkchop, he cut off Egypt's defenses by dissolving the military. These institutions would be reinstated, but would never regain, regain their previous status. Why did Akhenaten get rid of the military? I've looked high and low, and the only person who has ever given a theory on why Akhenaten got rid of the military is young Pharaoh. And for as much as he gets on my nerves, I have to give him his respect as a polymath. I'm not saying he's a genius, a polymath, but if that's the title that he wants to use, then fine. I respect you as a polymath. And the reason I do is because he said the reason Akhenaten got rid of the military is because the military had reptilians in it. Because remember, Amu, I'm sorry, uh, Amos the first, the very first person at the very top left of the 18th dynasty, he tapped into the energy of Amun. Why is this important? Because Amun is a reptilian. Young Pharaoh doesn't like Amun. Young Pharaoh likes Aten. That's his whole thing. Because the Amun Ra squad tore his ass up and made him Young Pharaoh from Pharaoh Allah. You went from Allah to being young? It was demeaning. Which leads to to Egypt's nuclear war. Young Pharaoh don't know I'm on his ass. Pause. I, I been knew about that nuclear war. I learned about that nuclear war from Baba Phil, Dr. from Baba, Dr. Phil Valentine. Dr. Phil Valentine been talked about that reptilian war. Young Pharaoh, he think he gonna pull something out the bag on me that I don't know. I haven't already talked about. Bro, I've been covered that by shout out to Dr. Phil Valentine. Shout out to Baba. Yas Crumb, do a video on uh, the movie Oppenheimer. I've been talked about Oppenheimer. Dr. J. Oppenheimer, father of the atomic bomb, was lecturing at a college when a student asked if that was the first atomic bomb, the bomb that he set off, the bomb that they made the movie about. Oppenheimer said, yes, dot, 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 in modern times, he replied. The student, I'm sorry, the sentence alluded to ancient Hindu texts that described an apocalyptic catastrophe. Oppenheimer, who also studied ancient Sanskrit, which was in the movie, was referring to a passage in the Bhag, uh, Bhagavad Gita. And I, I'm sure I pronounced that wrong. Please forgive me. 
that describes a global disaster caused by an unknown weapon, a ray of iron, as the holy book describes it. Now, uh, desert glass. This evidence comes from an ample extensions from ample extensions of fused glass fragments, silicon crystals resemble remarkably the same fragment found after the nuclear explosions in the white sands of Mexico at an atomic bomb testing site. These people were in Egypt, driving over the desert, and they found vast sheets of glass, and they never seen glass in the desert, except over, uh, except underneath a nuclear bomb site. Now, I want to ask the listening audience and also those who are going to catch this later. True or false? True or false? Glass is made out of sand. <laughs> So it looks like everybody already knows. Uh, it looks like no one said false. And just to put the respect on the first responder, because you know I'm big on that. It was Cosmic Cutie. She says true. Yes, the answer is true. To make, to turn sand into glass, you have to heat it up to like, I don't know what temperature it is. Obviously, for the sake of this video, that doesn't matter. But the point is to make sand, to make glass, you have to heat up sand. So they were in the desert. This is in real life. They were in a desert in Egypt and they're driving over. Uh, they're driving through the desert right here where you see this yellow uh, stuff at right there. That's all glass. I think we already did two, two, two. Let me see. Press three, three, three. If you didn't know that there was a big that right now there's a big chunk of the desert that's glass. Press two, two, uh, two, two, two. If you did not know that there's a big chunk of desert right now. Over over there, that's glass. This is all wise, right and exact. In 1932, Patrick Clayton, a surveyor from the Egyptian Geological Survey, drove between the dunes of the Great Sand Sea in Egypt when he heard crunching under his wheels. It was big chunks of glass in the sand. The find caught the attention of geolo uh, geologists around the world and planted a seed for one of the biggest modern scientific enigmas. What phenomenon could be capable, capable of raising the temperature of the sand to at least 3.3 thousand degrees Fahrenheit, turning it into a vast sheet of solid yellow green glass? While passing through uh, Alamogordo's white sand missile range, uh, Albion Hart, the first engineer to graduate from MIT, observed that chunks of glass left by nuclear tests were identical to the formations that had been observed in the African desert 50 years earlier. However, the vast glass in the desert required an explosion 10,000 10, times more powerful than that in New Mexico. The bomb, the heat that was generated for that much glass to be in the Sahara Desert would have required a bomb equivalent to 10 times bigger than the one America had. Only 10% of the atom bomb exploded. I don't know if anybody knows that or not. Only 10% of the atom bomb exploded over 
Hiroshima and Nagasaki, meaning it was a 90% dud. When the reptilians went to war with Akhenaten, the reason Akhenaten destroyed the military is because they had to set a nuclear bomb to get those to get the damn uh, reptilians off they ass. The um, Akhenaten, who was an alien himself, had to detonate a nuclear warhead in order to get the reptilians off of him. Young Pharaoh think I don't know that, but I know that. When they'd be like, oh, the lion is the king of the jungle. Crumb ain't no jungle in, 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 in Africa. Yes, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're, you are correct. Dr. York is another one who has been saying these things all along. My apologies. Let me give. I don't want to present this information as something I made up or I discovered. I'm standing on the shoulders of the ancestors. I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. Fine. No problem. I have no problem giving any. I'm the master student, not the master teacher. I don't mind giving nobody credit who deserves the credit. I don't have a problem with that. The lion is the king of the jungle because before they detonated that nuclear warhead, that was a jungle. The Sahara Desert was not always a desert. Oh, the lion. He, how can the lion be the king of the jungle when ain't no jungle? Ain't no jungle no more. I digress, but that right there is the blast radius because that used to be jungle. You would say, well, Crumb, if that used to be jungle, then you would probably have to see along that blast radius um, incinerated bodies just laying on the ground. Yeah, you do. You can. And this was all in the same time period. Uh, they, they be having this stuff on like the History Channel. This isn't even like, you know, you got to be a, a, a mason to know this. This is this is like you you get cable. Like, you learn this on cable. You, if you watch and depending on what what TV you watch, if you watch TV, it'll be on TV. You you just can't watch BET. <laughs> you know, it's not going to be on BET. <laughs> but I digress. Remember. After Akhenaten set off that nuclear warhead, because Akhenaten was bald, Akhenaten, tell me how I'm supposed to look with no hair. Y'all remember that song by Chris Brown and Jordan Sparks called No Hair? Tell me how I'm supposed to look with no hair. That, that, was, that was my jam. Tell me how I'm supposed to look with no hair, no hair. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so uh, Chris Brown and Jordan Sparks had made a song called No Hair. And um, we know in the in our community, um, we wear a lot of weave. And then a lot of times the sisters will be like, the ancient Egyptians would wear weave. The reason the ancient Egyptians were wearing weave is because they were suffering from hair loss due to nuclear fallout. The ancestors were suffering from hair loss due to nuclear fallout. That's why they were wearing the weave. Yes, this is according to Dr. Malachi Z. York, but I personally can confirm that I learned it from Baba Dr. Phil Valentine. So 5,000 years ago, native to Central Asia, garlic is one of the oldest cultivated plants in the world and has been grown for over 5,000 years. Ancient Egyptians seem to have been the first to cultivate this plant that played an important role in their culture. If you look at this picture, you're going to see ancient Egyptians and they're giving their assumption of how the pyramids were built. Uh, and they have the, I don't know if he's supposed to be the, the, not the slave master. I think he's like the cracker, the middle management dude that whips everybody. He has uh, garlic on the table. The pic This is very pixelated. It's, it's very poor, but hopefully you can make out that that's garlic that the ancient Egyptians are eating. And that's that black weave that I showed you that they're wearing. That's the weave right there that they're wearing and they're eating garlic. Why are they eating garlic? According to ncbi.gov, uh, NIH, National Institution of Health. Garlic stimulates the proliferation of macrophages and lymphocytes and protects against the suppression 
of immunity by ultraviolet radiation. Family, please press 555. <laughs> please press 555 if you understand, uh, if you did not know, garlic, black garlic is good for radiation. Black garlic is good for radiation. Where's my camera? That's, that's crazy. Webcam. Oh, webcam FaceTime. Yay. Okay. I didn't know that. Okay, yeah. Um, gar the ancient Egyptians ate a bunch of uh, black garlic because black garlic protects you from radiation because the ancient Egyptians uh, had to suffer after Akhenaten released a nuclear warhead and they and and they had to cope with the with with the conditions you know what <laughs> i'm not playing with you it's so funny <laughs> uh yeah um so yeah with that said uh time so now that we talked about the nuclear fallout let's deal with time so um the reason that um, the whole Akhenaten thing is, I'll just read. Akhenaten makes the worship of all gods illegal except for his. He illegitimized over 2,000 gods, including the top 360. However, he was not quite able to banish the final boss, a moon. Now, this is according to journeytoegypt.com in an article titled Gods of Egypt, Egyptian Gods and Goddesses. It reads, it is not surprising that there were over 2000 deities in the Egyptian pantheon. Some of these deities names are well known. Isis, Osiris, Horus, Amun, blah, blah, blah. You already know these people. You, you already know these guys. So with that said, there there were over this is this is according to them. There are over 2000 gods. Why is the number 2000 important? Because I cannot and got rid of all 2000 approximately. And he got rid of the top 360, which makes the whole thing super bad. So the word day means God in Spanish. This is part one question what does dios mean in spanish answer the proper noun dios used to refer to a single supreme being is normally capitalized and does not usually take an article like the is just dios and if we look to the right i put in google here's the question what does dios mean in spanish and it shows dios means god in English. Now, if you look at the bottom of that screenshot, it's going to say deity or Dios with the OS. Oh, well, all of them have the OS. Now, when you're dealing with uh, Dios, if you look at the very bottom to the left hand side, uh, the bottom, I have the word atheist. Oh, I'm sorry. I hit the wrong button. I have the word atheist. Now, the word atheist means away from God because the word the means God. The word the means God and atheist means somebody who doesn't believe in God. Just like uh, Dios means God, a Dios, meaning away from God. That's why you say adios, meaning going away from God. Yes, just like a Dio or Ray. Dio, radio and audio. You're coming from Dio, meaning God. Uh, in France, when uh, uh, do D I E U is the same, uh, just like with the word, uh, I'm sorry, it's, it's the same thing away from God. Because remember, the T and the D are the same letter. The letter T and the letter D 
are both the exact same letter. If I said it once, I'm going to say it a million times. That's why instead of saying Adam, A T, uh, I'm sorry, A D O M, like Adam and Eve, it's Adam, A T O M. Or when you're saying, yes, I, A, -A U is uh, gold. A U. So um, the golden sound. Audio. Absolutely. That's all wise, Ryan right exact. You brothers, uh, I don't know if purple pills, a guy or a girl, but the family is all wise, Ryan right exact. You guys are on fire. Uh, moving forward. Day means God in Spanish. What does the name Dia mean? This is on the left. The name Dia is a girl's name of the Spanish origin, meaning day, one fine day. And look on the right hand side. I, I Googled what does dia mean in spanish dia means day uh and if you look at the very bottom i don't know why i put those things at the very bottom it doesn't necessarily matter let's keep on going uh part three history and etym etymology for deity middle english deity from anglo-french deity from late latin dietat dietas from latin dias god akin to old english to god of war latin divas god Dios, day, Greek, Dios, heavenly, Sanskrit, de, uh, diva, heavenly God. Devil, remember, if you go back into Spanish, Diablo, Dia, even the devil is a God and has his own day, Dia, meaning day. Procession of the equinox is divided into 12 sections, part one. So you're going to have a great year. The great year is, let's say, uh, 24,000 years. I'm going to say 24,000. Why? Because if we look here, it says astrology uh, age. And the definition of astrology age is one method. One method is to divide a great year, which is 24, in the 12 astrological ages of approximately equal length, lengths of around, because we don't know the exact number, of around 2,160 years per age based on a vernal equinox moving through the side real zodiac. So the great, just like you have 24 hours in the day, you have 24,000 years in a great year. So uh, 24 divided by 12 is two instead of saying 2,160, because we don't know, let's just say it's 2000 years because every single day has its own God. Every city has its own God. Every year has its own God. And yeah, family, I'm not going to uh, make no apologies about it. I am a fan of the reptilians. And I want to ask y'all, uh, uh According to Asian, uh, uh, the Asian Zodiac, what year are we in? Um, according to the Asian Zodiac, what year are we in? Go. Go. Ding, 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 ding. All right. That was pretty quick. Um, I didn't think it was going to take that long. The very first person to get the right answer was Conscious Connect. Put some respect to her name. She says, we are in the year of the dragon. That is a very true statement. So all this year, you're going to see me with the Draco, the Drake, the serpent type energy. So um, I make no apologies about tapping in to the energy that is that, that we are in, because um, I know y'all really dedicated to that European, um, that European um, uh, zodiac. But I, I'm I'm going to bring you from out of that into something else, respectfully, because all things have their place. Uh, so let's keep on going. So now, um, what? Uh, the calendar is off, so we should round to the, to, to the great year, 24,000 years. This is the dude who gave us th that science. The dude who gave us the science that, that the great year is 24,000 years and each age is 2,000 years is this Indian dude. I'm not going to go into it, but it, it's 2,000 years. Why is this important? Because if you look right here, 
uh, he got rid of 2000 gods. Why is this even important? I, I know you don't understand, uh, but yeah, this is me kind of beating that horse to say it's 24,000 years because it's, it's really Earth and its sister star. No, I'm sorry, not Earth, but our sun and its sister star, which is Sirius moving forward. So now um, <clears throat> if he got rid of all the days, then what does that mean? I know you don't understand that. And this is why I have a problem with young Pharaoh, but I understand young Pharaoh is smart and he is correct. So uh, what is today, family? Uh, today is Friday. Today is, let me just pull up the date. March 1st, Friday, 2020, 20, 2024, according to the Gregorian calendar. So why is this important? Because according to young Pharaoh and according to his God, Akhenaten, I'm sorry, excuse me. According to his God, Aten, every day is Sunday. Akhenaten and young Pharaoh, they go by the ideology that every day is Sunday. Every day is Aten day. Today, the sun is out. So today is Sunday. Tomorrow, the most prominent figure in the sky will be the sun. Tomorrow will be Sunday. The day after that, the most prominent figure in the sky will be the sun. Every day is Sunday. This is optimism. This is, this is what I'm trying to get you to understand. If you were to say every day is Sunday, fine. I totally get it. And there's no such thing as Monday. Every night is Monday. Every night is moon day. Every day is Sunday. This is optimism. This is where we get rid of all the other gods. Because where is heaven? Heaven is in the sky. Who are the gods? The gods are the illuminary, the illuminated ones that reside in the sky. And we can see them every Monday. Oh, okay. Let's not call it Monday or, or moon day. We're going to call it moon night or moon. Every moon night. Every night is moon night. To the right is the original disc of Heru, the elder. This has nothing to do with Isis and Osiris. This is the original. Uh, is the, the disc of Heru, the elder, on the horizon. It symbolizes man's kundalini collect connection to God as above, so below. Akhenaten lived during a time of social decline when the reptilians uh, were the high priests tearing up everything. Um and there was an obvious disconnect to higher self due to the greed of the priesthood and the defamation of the gods they hosted. This social conditioning led to the exalting of Aten, who remained holy as it disconnected from the fall of man. So we see the two serpents connecting to each other. This is ho the whole thing. And, 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 and if, if I have to see both sides of the story, I'm not here just downing young Pharaoh. I understand this part of the story that there were reptilians posing as high priests and they were doing bad stuff. Fine. I have no problem with that. I'm not trying to defend reptilians. I understand where young Pharaoh is right. And I'm not here just to disagree and see where he's wrong. I understand why he would say that. And this is why. And if you see those those intertwining serpents, that's kundalini energy bringing you from lower self to higher self. So with Aten, what you're going to know or, or what you will realize is that there's going to be no staff. There's going to be no serpents. The serpent is going to be removed. The staff is going to be removed. And instead of Heru the elder, now you have Aten. Aten represents the removal from higher self and lower self. And we know the lower self is, is, is associated with the reptilian energy, with the, um, the lowest part of the brain it is the inner brain where the reptilian brain lies. The lowest part of your spine is, is your, um, your, uh, the, what is the lowest part of your spine? Those five bones, your sacral bone, your sacral bone. And those, uh, uh, that's where your kundalini energy uh, wraps around your sacral bone or Jacob's ladder three and a half times. You can Google that three and a half. 
Yes, that's correct. Uh, Ice Hawk, the Coxic. Uh, thank you so much, Will Justice, because uh, I was kind of getting fuzzy for a second. So keep me honest on that. Ice Hawk, yes, Tailbone, that's true. Um, oh, it's Sacrum. Ice Hawk is on it. So apparently he already knows what I'm talking about. That's all wise, right, and exact, good brother. Um, so yeah, with that said, let's continue on. So um, this is where you see the war between the reptilians and Aten. Aten is the disc. The reptilians are is lower self going to higher self. And we see higher self goes to lower self. So Aten was like, we getting the reptilians out of here. This is why young Pharaoh talks so bad about the reptilians. This social conditioning led to the exalting of Aten, who remained holy as it disconnected from the fall of man. This quarrel bells, bears an uncanny resemblance to that of Jesus when he took the exact same issue with the Pharisees and Sadducees who made the temple a marketplace. The, the whole issue between the reptilians versus Akhenaten, that was the same thing with Jesus versus the high priest. Family. And y'all know, a, a lot of you probably don't, but the, my real family, they know that I have high respect for the reptilians. I have high respect for the dragons. I have high respect for the serpent. I have high respect for the king cobra and the queen cobra. I have high respect, but I'm not going to lie to nobody. Press 666 if you understand that these so-called bad reptilians are high priest even to this day. Even to this day, a lot of your Catholic um, leaders, people inside the um, the um, the uh, the Vatican, a lot of these high priests, they they have this reptilian bloodline. Press 666 if you understand a lot of these high priests have reptilian bloodline. Not saying they're full blood reptilian. I mean, these are the babies. These are the Nephilim that never became giants. They live for a long time. They're, 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 um, they're archons. Uh, Jesus had the same issue with these um, reptilian overlords. Uh, who were posing as high priests. With that said, uh, Jesus entered the temple and the courts and drove out all who were bullying, uh, buying and selling there. Uh, selling there, he flipped the tables uh, uh, of money of money changers because remember a lot of these high priests, these um, these demigods, a lot of these demigods are in the banking system as well. A lot of these reptilian uh, perpetrators are going to be in the church and the banking system. And you're going to see that not only with Pharaoh Akhenaten, you're going to see that same story in the Bible. Uh, he flipped the tables of money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called the house of prayer, but you are making it a den of thieves. In the temple court, he found men, and it's just a story told, told again, moving forward. So where have you heard this story before? This is the same, because remember, uh, Akhenaten is the one who's going to bring you monotheism. Monotheism, Akhenaten brings you Christianity. Akhenaten also brings you Islam. Why did young Pharaoh do all those videos talking crap about Christianity and, and, and Islam, and then you go join the, 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 the cult of Aten? Muhammad had the exact same story where he goes to war with the priesthood. The, these reptilian priests... This dude who, who was who was pushing monotheism, Akhenaten was pushing monotheism, Jesus was pushing monotheism, Muhammad was pushing monotheism. The story goes as follows. Muhammad entered Mecca 630 AD and destroyed the statues of the idols and all the all the other pagan gods. Does anybody know? Let me ask the, the listening audience. How many gods? did Muhammad have to destroy? Go.
shout out to I am. You are all wise, right, and exact. Muhammad had to destroy 360 guides the same way Akhenaten had to destroy. Akhenaten got rid of 2,000 guides because there are 2,000 years in a, in a in an age, in a zodiac house, in an eon, blah, blah, blah. Muhammad had to get rid of 360 guides because every god represented one day of the year. Each and every god had their days because they were fighting monotheism and every god is represented by every day. But according to Akhenaten, every day is Aten day. In American terms or modern terms, we would say every day is, is Sunday. While early empires could be described as henotheistic, i.e., dominated by a single god ruling the elite as Marduk in the Babylonian Empire or Assur in the Assyrian Empire, etc. Let me start over. While early empires could be described as henotheistic, i.e. dominated by a single god ruling the elite or more directly by deifying the ruler in an imperial cult. The concept of holy war enters a new phase with the development of of monotheism. Remember, when Akhenaten had to George Bush the button, when Pharaoh Akhenaten had to George Bush the button behind that holy war, um, this, this was the hallmark of monotheism. Monotheism has always been uh, associated with war. Go, uh, Psalms is very henotheistic, one God to rule over all the other gods. The Bible never said there's, there's, there's one God. The God says there's a bunch of different gods, and our God is the biggest God of all those gods. Oh, polytheistic, there's a bunch of gods. Well, kind of. Monotheism, there's only one God. Eh, kind of. Really, there's one God, and he's the God of all the other gods. This is what this is my problem with young Pharaoh. Young Pharaoh talking about every day is Sunday. Every day is not no damn Sunday. There's more days than Sunday. I was talking to the Moors, and I'm not saying it like I'm not a Moor, but I am kind of saying it like I'm not a Moor because you've never seen me wear a fez. But anyway. So now, um, the whole thing with um, the Moors, the Moors will ask you, and this is inside the 101s, how many days in a year? And let me ask you the same thing the Moors asked me. I'm asking the listening audience, and I, I don't want to ask you too many questions, but bear with me. My question to you, how many days in a year? Go. <music> Ding, 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 ding. Conscious Connect has got the right answer. There's only seven days. This is more science. I don't, I don't, I don't want whatever answer from whatever school of thought that you're, I want more science. The Moors will ask you how many days in a year? The answer is seven. How many days in a century? Seven. How many days in a, a decade? Seven. How? This is according to Moorish science. The Moors say there are only seven days because if there are more than seven days, you have to name those days. And we only thank you. This is according to the circle seven. The names are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Those are the only days. 
And if you know the other days, then what are their names? Because when you're dealing with a God, you have to call that God's name. Before after before Akhenaten, they could name 2,000 days. How, how do you call a God? You call them. Remember when we press, I think we already did 777. Press 888. If you remember when, when, when we were kids, we'll go in the bathroom, we'll cut the lights off, and we'll say Candyman, Candyman. Candyman, and then run out of the bathroom. How do you call a God? You call them Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. How do you call a God? You call them. You have to know God's name. Before Akhenaten, they could name 2,000 gods. After Muhammad, before Muhammad, they could name 360 gods. Muhammad got rid of 360 gods. No, never say their names again. Every day is Sunday. So now with that said, It's not one God. There's a bunch of gods. It's just this God is the biggest God, according to the Bible. According to Psalms chapter 82, verse 1, it says, God presides in the great assembly. Assembly is a Hebrew word for synagogue. Or I'm sorry, he, assembly is an English word for the Hebrew word synagogue. God presides in the great assembly. He gives judgment among the gods. The big God that you love and repent and pray to, he sits with all the other gods. This is henotheism. We're not saying just, just one God. We're just saying there's one big leader God. And in the beginning, that big leader God was Amun, not Aten. Tell young Pharaoh, I said, stop it with this Aten crap. Aten is not the big one God. The big one God is Amun. But that's neither here nor there. Aten goes to war. This new forced, this new forced monotheistic mandate created strife and caused pushback from the bottom commoners all the way to the top religious elitist. They were all backing the reptilian ram energy. This strife would lead to the birth of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, which are all infamous for carrying out bloody holy wars. Family, let's be honest. Ain't no such thing as a holy war. If it's war, it's not holy. If it's holy, it's not war. Holy war, I would say, is an oxymoron. Saying holy war is like saying happy, sad. If it's happy, it's not sad. If it's sad, it's not happy. The strife would lead to the birth of Judaism uh, and holy wars because those are oxymorons. Uh, monotheism. Ancient monotheism describes uh, described as the instigator of violence in its early days because it inspired Israelites to wage war upon the Canaanites who believed in multiple gods. But yeah, so with that said, um, these the these multiple this monotheism thing has always brought war so when 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 young pharaoh and i were going back and forth he said i have a problem with the uh the reptilians because upon monotheism that led to a nuclear war with akhenaten okay fine i i, I don't have a problem with that young pharaoh that's true but not all reptilians are bad, but that's neither here nor there. Um, the cult of Aten spread through the world, emulating the hidden Amen. The cult of Aten copied their biggest arch nemesis, which is Amen or Amun. Amun is the hidden one. So Aten goes to war with Amun or Amun, who was a reptilian, and then takes his identity. 
And I told you this was the same thing, just like Aten took the identi identity of Amun, it was the same way that he came into the game. You can't make this stuff up. You taking people's identity. To be the hidden one is an attribute of Amun, but we're gonna, I'm gonna show you proof. Amun did, uh, I'm sorry, Aten did the same thing. This is the same thing young Pharaoh did. The same thing. The people you beefing with, you go take their style. The people you beefing with, you go take their style. And I'm not making stuff up. I got receipts. Never forget. I will beat the shit out of this enemy. I will beat this fuck out of this. <laughs> so don't think I'm, I don't want nobody to get general. I'm the real general. I'm the real general. He a YouTube general. So but with that being said, Seti was sitting right here on my lap. I hugged him by his waist and tell him just like this. Seti. Nigga, and rub on his head. And I tell him, Seti, you never had to accept $10,000 from me and then don't tell me you don't fuck with me. Crumb TV. You got that energy from Pharaoh Akhenaten with the whole Aten versus Amun. So Amun is the hidden one. So Aten goes and steals this whole style. And now Aten is the hidden one. Aten is Yahweh. The Hebrew name of God is Tetragrammaton or Aten. Look at the very end of the word Tetragrammaton. Can somebody please look at the word Tetragrammaton and look at the very end of it? You're going to see the name Aten. And then those four letters of Aten, A-T-O-N, are translated as Yahweh. And it's translated as Lord. Aten is Lord. Tetra means four. Grandma means unit of weight, letter or character in Greek. Grammatis, uh, gr I can't say it means the one who teaches letters in Greek. Grammar also refers to learning magic, incantations, or spells. In this sense, tetragrammaton could mean the four magic letter, A-T-O-N, or Aton, who teaches four magic letters. Aten is stealing the style of Amun, who is the hidden one, and Aten is hidden in Yahweh. Just like young Pharaoh stole the style of Polite, his nemesis. You can't make this up. Aten is Adon. Judea, uh, Judaic tradition may also refer to the Lord as Adonai. Ad uh, Adon is really Aton. According to Wikipedia in an article titled Names of God in Judaism, it says the singular forms Adon and Adonai, meaning my Lord, are used in the Hebrew Bible as royal titles, as in the first book of Samuel and for distinguished persons. The Phoenicians used it as a title for Tammuz, the origin of the Greek Adonis. It is also used very occasionally in Hebrew texts to refer to God. Let's go back to the book of Psalms. Aten is the Hebrew God that uh, young Pharaoh talks so badly about. Aten is Odin. The mythical Odin, who is King Dan I, is said to be in legend the first unofficial founder king of Denmark, which is really Denmark, who had reigned before Christ in the BC. He was the unofficial founder king, making the monarchy of Denmark the oldest in Europe. King Dan I. These names are actually titles or assumed names that are derived from Hebrew word Adonai. I didn't type this up. This is copy paste. 
The pronunciation of the Tetragrammaton came to be avoided in the Hellenistic period. Therefore, Jews use Adonai instead in prayers. Adonai, the name of both deity and to man, is used approximately 449 times in the Old Testament and 350 times in conjunction with Yahweh. The name Dan is short for Wodan or Odin, whose names are titles that originate from Adonai. Thus, the name of the Lord, the Jews use Adonai. The, great, the Greeks use Adonai. The Norse use Odin. And the Anglo-Saxons use Woden. Y'all sitting here talking so much crap about these religions. And then you're going to sign up for the cult of Aten? Y'all talk, y'all sign up for every single to, to bash every single religion, and then you sign up to be in the cult of Aten. Young Pharaoh, we're gonna have to have a conversation about that one day, respectfully. Levi uh, Aten is Leviathan. Leviathan is a sea monster in the Old Testament. Levi means tax, or levy means tax, and Aten is Aton meaning taxation for Atan or Yahweh. This is the four-letter tetragrammaton god this, that, that is running this big cult called the cult of Aten. Both the Nab uh, Nabataean kingdom and Athens in Greece refer to Aten. So go, go look at the... Uh, the word Athens, that comes from Aten. The Nabataeans, that has Aten in there. Aten birthed monotheism, which was initiated with the nuclear war. The Abrahamic religions were inspired by monotheism, followed uh, the mono, the Abrahamic religions which were inspired by monotheism, followed in true fashion by launching their own, their very own holy wars. I feel like I got a burp. This demonization of a moon becomes literal as the word demon originates from a moon. I was, an, I was initially going to name this video Crumb vs. Young Pharaoh, Demons vs. Satan. Crumb versus young Pharaoh, demons versus Satan. What slide am I? I'm, I'm on slide 79. Let me go back to the top. Look, look, it says Satan versus demon. This is where I get into the Satan versus demon. One of the problems that I have with young Pharaoh, who is my brother, and I love him so much as a brother, is that he is he. You know, and, and that's why whoever accusing me of spookism is ridiculous because I despise spookism. I despise spookism. I despise dogma. So anyway, so when, when Young Pharaoh talks so bad about demons and Satan, I'm like, bro, pull your skirt down. Ain't no such thing as like, bro, come on, yo. Come on with the whole boogeyman talk. This demonization of a moon becomes literal as the word demon originates from a moon. This is according to a moon, the Wikipedia article. The Greeks of the lower Nile Delta combined features of the supreme god Zeus with features of the Egyptian god Amun. Amun, worshipped by the Greeks as Amon, had a temple and a statue, the gift of Pindar. So now you're going to see where um, they worshipped, uh, the Greeks worshipped a moon, but they called him A-M-M-O-N. That's the part I want you to pay attention to, A-M-M-O-N. So now, um, the term demon is, this is according to uh, Encyclop Encyclopedia Britannica. The term demon is derived from the Greek word 
Damien, which means a supernatural being or a spirit or maybe even an alien. Though it, 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 it has commonly been associated with an evil or malevolent spirit, the term originally meant a spiritual being that influenced a person's character. Because remember, Amos had channeled this reptilian energy so he can kick the Hyksos' ass. So now you have a demon. Um, I'm sorry, here, let me back up. Now you have uh, the Greeks worshipped Amon, A-M-M-O-N. And the Greeks also called a demon a supernatural spirit. And you look at the spelling of a demon. It's D, let's just pretend the D's not there. A-I-M-O-N. The ram is determined to be evil by Akhenaten and its deranged version is a goat. They presented Amun to you as a goat and they told you that Amun is the Baphomet. He's bad. He's a goat god because Amun has always been demonized. But he was demonized by Akhenaten and that monotheism boulder dash. My little thing says, above is a painting of Amun, one of the creator gods in Egyptian mythology, decorates the tomb of Luxor, Egypt. Amun often appears as a human figure with arms, head as uh, with a ram's with, with human a human figure and ram's head, as he is the uh, the predecessor of Baphomet. When Christians say Amen, they are worshiping and giving power to the opposite of what they intended out of ignorance. Related names to the name Damien. According to moms who think uh, re related names to Damien is Amon, A-M-M-O-N. The related name to Damien is Amon. Let's go back. Damien is a supernatural spirit. And the Greeks worshipped Amon as a supernatural spirit. So when I tell you that Amun is the demon, Amun is a demon. Amun, the newly formed ram god, inspires mimicry Greco-Roman culture. So on the far left, you're going to see Amon or Amun with his goat head. In the middle, you're going to see Jupiter with his goat rams. I'm sorry, goat rams, his goat horns. And then to the far right, you're going to see um uh, Zeus Amon with those same horns, and those horns represent the hippocampus, the part of the brain. But nonetheless, so I just want to make sure that we understand Amun has been demonized as a demon, and this is very literal. He, he's the goat, he's the Baphomet, he's this, he's that. Uh, Aten finally becomes Satan. Once the cult of Amun was restored, Aten became, or Atan, became the outcast, the enemy, or the ad, ad, adversary for the ruling class. Aten became Satan. Look at, press 999 if you can see the word Aten inside the word Satan. Remember, the vowels are interchangeable. Aten became Satan, the devil and Lucifer in Christian mythology, and Shaitan for Muslims. Yeah, I want to take a moment to uh, acknowledge the family who has supported by taking the dollar challenge and donating a dollar to the Cash App. Where is... Uh, where is the Cash App? Do, 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 do. Carl, I see you. I love you. I appreciate you. Um, who is this? Um, I'm looking. I'm looking. Indigo, I see you. I love you. I appreciate you. 
Corey, I see you. I love you. I appreciate you. Freedom, I see you. I love you. I appreciate you. Um, <laughs> make sure it's really me. I see you. I love you. I appreciate you. Uh, Jennifer, I see you. I love you. I appreciate you. Holy separation. Wow. I see you. I love you. I appreciate you. Brian, I'm not going to read your last name out of respect. Johnny, I'm not going to read your last name out of respect. Boo Ali 22. Montreal, I'm not going to read your last name out of respect. John Smith, I read your last name because it's just so general. Nobody's going to figure out that it's you. Um, so if you want to take the dollar challenge, you can do so by donating a dollar to uh, the cash app. Uh, it makes every uh, um, it, it really does mean a lot to me to have that type of support. But family, I am not Pastor Porkchop. I am not Reverend Chicken Wing. I'm not here to get rich off the family. If you want to support the video, I've already given you the complete video for free. So if you want to support, you can always hit the like button. That's free. It only takes a second. It works for the algorithm. It's not panhandling. Um, uh it does so much. It's only one click. Click. Uh, why not? Uh, if, if you watch this video for two hours and you sat through, what, uh, 15 minutes of dead air, guess what, family? You like me. It's okay. It's okay. Hold on. Let me try to fix this. It's okay. It's okay, family. You like me. I like me too. Uh, I would like to think that I'm a cool guy. So tap all the way in. Also drop a comment, family. Uh, tell me what you think. Uh, did I sum up the cult of I in and the history of young Pharaoh adequately? You let me know in the comments. Also, family, if you have not done so, please, at this point, uh, I would ask that you do subscribe. If you do, then you are a master student. And I want to thank you for uh, sitting through uh, this lecture from the professor, the master student himself, me, your brother, Crumb TV, uh, the master student, Crumb. Uh, I want to leave you, family. That's right. I do have to go the exact same way I came to you. Let me see. Can I throw this in here? I don't know if that's going to to work. I'm your brother, Crumb, and you are now watching Crumb TV. Peace, peace, family. This your boy, Young Pharaoh, and you are now watching Crumb TV. This is Danielle, LOL, JK, and you're now watching Crumb TV. Hey, this is Reggae Boy, and I'm watching Crumb TV. Watching Crumb TV? You are now watching Crumb TV. This is Miss Diva, and you are watching Crumb TV. You are now watching Crumb TV. This is Lady Lee from Las Vegas. You are now watching Crumb TV. I love this shit. I'm watching right now.